What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about manually installing WordPress onto your Windows computer. The process is the same basically for macOS as well. And I don't think I have to create another separate video for MAMP or for macOS, but I will give you a screenshot to show you the slight difference. Now, if you can, consider supporting the channel by purchasing a copy of DevWP. This is my development theme where I teach people how to code professional WordPress themes. I've spent thousands of hours and years working on this project, and my goal is to give you what I believe to be a highly efficient and productive workflow. So consider making a purchase. It helps me to continue making these videos. You can also check out some of my other videos that I have. You see this one's five and a half hours. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial. All right, but first we're gonna download WordPress. So in order to do so, this is the manual process, by the way. I do have an upcoming video where I'll show you how to use WP CLI. I actually did do a previous video on WCLI and you see that's almost a one hour long video, but I wanna show you the manual process. And then in another video, I'll give you a very streamlined way of getting started with WPCLI. All right, so go to wordpress.org forward slash download. Click on the download WordPress. You download it to your computer. I'm gonna change the folder to the HT Docs folder and click save. Go to your file explorer. I'm gonna go to HT Docs. I'm gonna make it large icons. All right, so again, we see we have the default folders and files that are created when you download and install XAMPP. This is for Windows. If you're using Mac OS and MAMP, then you have a different set of folders. You'll click on the zip file that you downloaded to compress folders. So just extract all and extract. Let it run its course. It'll take uh, about a minute in order to install this or to get it extracted. And we're almost there. All right, so once you have it extracted, this is the folder double click it. What I'll do is I'll just copy it and then paste it into the root of the HC Docs folder. You want to have the WordPress core in the root of the HC Docs itself. And these are the various files. Let me click on view, extra large icons. Basically everything we're going to be working with is going to be in the themes folder and the plugins folder. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just delete this real quick. I'm going to go to VS Code, open up Terminal, now I do have aliases already set up on my system, so that command uh, will not work for you. But what will work if you need to is change directory, C, XAMPP, HC Docs. So that would work. I create aliases to make it easier for me to access files and folders very quickly via the terminal. In an upcoming video, I'll show you more about aliases. Right now I'm gonna type out ls-lah, and it shows you what you currently have. All right, so we're gonna change into this folder right here, and you see we have WordPress there. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is move it to the root of HC Docs. We did it before, I deleted the folder because I wanna show you how to do this via the command line. Throughout this series of videos, I'll show you how to do certain things via the command line because I think that's definitely very beneficial. And then I'll have a separate video where I'll go over pretty much everything you need to know about Terminal and the command line itself. So from this folder, I'll type out MV WordPress and just a double dot. And now if we do ls-lah, we see we don't have WordPress there anymore. But if we go back to the root, now we see we have WordPress there. I could change into that directory and I can see all the files and folders there as well. Let's open up our local server. I'm gonna start Apache and start my SQL. And then I'll go into the browser and go to localhost. Then I'll go to phpMyAdmin. Now I'm going to create a database. I'll go here to databases. I'll type out WP. I'll click create. The database is set up. But you see we currently have no tables. So what we'll do now is I'll go back to localhost. And I'll type out localhost forward slash WordPress. Since we kept the name of WordPress as the folder name, you'd use that as the URL to access your local WordPress installation. So since we haven't set it up yet, we'll get this page, click on continue. So we're gonna need the database name, which we set to WP. The username for XAMPP and for MAMP is gonna be root. For the database password, for XAMPP, it's gonna be blank. You can change it, but I'll leave it at default blank for now. If you're using MAMP, it's gonna be root. And for the database host, it'll be localhost. And you can change the table prefix if you want. So we'll click let's go. The database name is WP. Username is going to be root. For XAMPP, it's going to be blank. For MAMP, it'll be root as well. Then we'll leave the database host as localhost. 
and the table prefix as WP underscore. Then click submit. If everything's correct, you'll get this notification and then run the installation. Then you can give yourself a site title. I'll just call it WordPress for now. Give yourself a username, a password. Now we're working locally and there's no sensitive data on this, so I'll leave it to root. Confirm use of weak password. Now, if you're on a production site, obviously you want this to be extremely strong, but with no sensitive data and being in a local development environment, it's okay to use, you know, a, a weak password here. Put in a fake email and then click install WordPress. Once it's been installed, click on login, put in your username and password, and now we have WordPress installed. Go back to the database, refresh the page, and now you see we have the 12 tables that are set up for WordPress by default. I do have a very long video where I go deeper into the WordPress database, but basically these are the 12 tables that you're gonna work with most often. Go back to your local installation. You can see your post over here, your pages, any plugins you currently have installed, the settings, permalinks, any tools, any users that are on your system for this local installation, and any media that you have. All right, so just get familiar with the back end of WordPress itself. And now you have your local installation. Get to know the database. And this is just the beginning of our journey to developing a custom theme. Again, if you can, consider supporting the project by purchasing DevWP. It's a project I've been working on for years. I put thousands of hours into this. And my goal is to give you a very efficient and productive workflow. You can also check out some of the other videos I have where I go over how to set up WordPress multi-site, WordPress roles and capabilities, and my very long master WordPress theme development step-by-step -step tutorial. Now this series of videos is all about developing a custom theme and is updated, but I'm using a different strategy here. Instead of one very long video, I'm doing each video step-by-step. -step. All right, so by now we see that we have WordPress installed. You see the URL. This is the URL right there. Again, every project will have a different name here. Since we kept the folder name WordPress, that's what it is right there. But now you see also that this process took a little bit of time. If you're gonna be working on multiple installations and you wanna streamline your workflow, then definitely check out the next video. I'll show you how to use WP CLI. And trust me, it's definitely worth learning. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Consider supporting the channel by getting DevWP. And I'll catch you in the next video. Happy coding.